In this video, we'll be going over IRS Form 8829, Expenses for Business Use of Your Home. Generally, you should use Form 8829 to figure the allowable expenses for business use of your home on Schedule C and any carryover to the next tax year for amounts not deductible in the current tax year. You should use a separate Form 8829 for each home that you used for business during the tax year. You cannot use Form 8829 in the following situations. One, you are claiming expenses for business use of your home as a partner, or you are claiming these expenses on Schedule F. Instead, complete the worksheet to figure the deduction for business use of your home located in IRS Publication 587. Two, all of the expenses for business use of your home are properly allocable to inventory costs. Instead, you should figure these expenses in Schedule C Part 3. And 3. If you have elected to use the simplified method for this home for the tax year. If you had more than one home during the tax year that was used for business, you can use the simplified method for only one home. Use Form 8829 to claim expenses for business use of the other home. Generally, you can deduct business expenses that apply to a part of your home only if that part is used on a regular basis, one, as your principal place of business or for any of your trades or businesses, two, as a place of business used by your patients, clients, or customers to meet or deal with you in the normal course of trade or business, or three, in connection with your trade or business if separate if it is a separate structure not attached to your home there are exceptions to the exclusivity requirement when it comes to storage of inventory or product samples and operating certain daycare facilities in determining whether the office in your home qualifies as a principal place of business you must consider one the relative importance of the activities performed at each place where you conduct business, and two, the amount of time spent at each place where you conduct business. Your home office will qualify as a principal place of business if you use it extensively and regularly for administrative or management activities of your trade or business, and you have no other fixed location where you conduct substantial administrative or management activities for your trade or business. There is a list of administrative or management activities to serve as examples located in the IRS form instructions. There are four parts to this tax form. Part one, calculating the part of your home used exclusively for business. Two, figuring your allowable deduction. Three, calculating depreciation of your home, and four, carryover of unallowed expenses to the following tax year. So at the top of this tax form should go the name of the taxpayer and taxpayer social security number. In part one, you'll dedicate, you'll annotate the area used exclusively and regularly for business, daycare, or for storage of inventory. For example, let's assume that you have a 1,000 square foot office in your home. In part two, in line two, you will enter the total area of your home. Let's assume that your home is 4,000 square feet. Line three, you will divide line two into line one to arrive at 25%, meaning your home office is approximately 25% of the total area of your home and this is used as the business percentage uh, for your home expenses on line 7. If you operate a daycare facility you will need to complete lines 4, 5, and 6. So let's imagine that you used a daycare facility for 200 days in the previous year and that the ta that each day was a six-hour day. That would be 1,200 
hours if you started or stopped using your home for daycare during the year you should see the form instructions this indicates that according to the form instructions you would multiply the number of days that the home was in service by 24 which rep reflects the total amount of time that would have been available for example 200 days times 24 hours comes to 4,800 hours of availability. You would then multiply, divide 1,200 by 4,800 to arrive at 25%. If you're operating a daycare facility, you will then multiply line six by line three, and this number would become 12.5% instead of 25%. For the sake of this example, let's assume that you are not operating a daycare facility and that your normal business percentage is 25%. In part two, you'll figure your allowable deduction. First, enter the amount from Schedule C line 25 plus any gain derived from the business use of your home minus any loss from the trade or business not derived from the business use of your home. For more information, see the form instructions. Let's assume that this number is $10,000 from your Schedule C with all required adjustments. In lines 9, 10, and 11, we will calculate casualty losses, deductible mortgage interest, and real estate taxes. Lines 9, 10, and 11 also are allowable itemized deductions on Schedule A. So the purpose of these lines is to calculate how much of these costs, if any, should be indicated on form 8829 as opposed to Schedule A. Let's imagine that you had $10,000 of deductible mortgage interest in the year. If you, if you take the standard deduction, you will enter nothing in line 10 and instead all entries will be under excess mortgage interest on line 16. If you itemize, then you would enter $10,000 on line 10. And assuming that there are no other costs in lines 9, 10, or 11, you would carry that figure down to line 12, which is the sum of lines 9, 10, and 11. Then you would multiply this number by line 7, which represents the business percentage. So $2,500, which is 25%. Of the ten thousand dollars that is the amount that you can enter as the business percentage of your mortgage interest let's clear this and assume that there are no business interest there are no business expenses related to casualty losses mortgage interest or real estate taxes if there were you would carry these calculations down through the rest of the form. For line, six, for line 15, you'll simply subtract whatever number happens to be on line 14 from the number on line 8. So if there was a number here, then line 15 would be reduced by that amount. For line 16 and line 17, the form instructions give specific guidance to taxpayers whether they are claiming the standard deduction or itemizing deductions on Schedule A. If you're claiming the standard deduction, then you will enter all of the home mortgage interest that were paid for loans used to buy, build, or substantially improve the home where you conducted business. 
Do not include mortgage business interest on a loan that did not benefit your home, such as a refinance to pay down credit card bills. If you itemize on Schedule A, then the form instructions determine, help you determine that if the amount you figured earlier for line 10 was less than the full amount of interest you paid because of limits on deducting home mortgage interest as a personal expense, then you would include the excess attributable to the loans that you bought, that you used to pay to buy, build, or substantially improve your home. For example, if you paid $15,000 of home mortgage interest, but you could only deduct $12,000 on Schedule A because of limits that applied to deducting home mortgage interest as a personal expense, then you would include the difference in column B. In line 17, we'll do the same thing for real estate taxes. If you claim the standard deduction, you would enter all real estate taxes paid. If you itemize, then you would only include the amount that you were not otherwise allowed to enter on Schedule A. Line 18 includes the amounts paid for insurance. Line 19, the amount for rent. Lines 20 and 21 for utilities. Lines 22 for expenses, other expenses, not included on lines 9 through 21. So how do we know which ones to put under column A versus column B? The difference is the difference between direct expenses and indirect expenses. So column A is for direct expenses, which benefit only the business part of your home. These might include painting or repairs made to the specific area or rooms used for business. Enter 100% of your direct expenses on the appropriate line in column A. In column B, there are indirect expenses which are used for keeping up and operating your entire home. They generally benefit both the business and personal parts of your home. And line 24 contains the calculation to help calculate the business-related use of indirect expenses. So let's insert some hypothetical numbers into this calculation. Let's imagine that you spent $1,000 uh, exclusively on repairs and maintenance to your home office. You spent another $200 on business use of your home office for increased internet, but you spent $300 uh, for electrical bills for the entire, or $3,000, that's probably a more realistic number, for uh, electrical bills for your entire house. Let's assume that you spent $2,000 in the tax year for insurance and everything else is blank. On line 24, uh, on line 23, you'll add the lines 16 through 22. So for column A, this equals $1,200. For column B, this equals $5,000. For column B only, you will multiply line 23 by line 7. So 25% of your $5,000 indirect expenses is $1,250. If you have a carryover of prior year operating expenses, then you will enter that amount in line 25. You should find this number from your previous year's form 8829, line 43, which is operating expenses carried over to the next year.
for this walkthrough, we will assume that there are no carried over operating expenses. For line 26, you will add line 23, column A, which is $1,200, line 24, which is $1,250, and line 25, which is zero. And this should give you $2,450. The allowable operating expenses is the smaller of either of line 26 or line 15. Line 28 is for the limit on excess casualty losses and depreciation. You will subtract line 27 from line 15. So the remaining amount, which is 7550, is the most that you can deduct for casualty losses and depreciation. For line 29, casual, excess casualty losses, you will multiply the casualty losses attributable to the home in which you reported conducted business that are in excess of the amount reported on line 9, which is up here by the per business percentage of those losses and then you would enter the result. So if you had $10,000 of casualty losses attributable to a federally declared disaster and you sta use the standard deduction, then you would use line 29 to calculate the casualty losses attributable to the home by multiplying that number by the per business percentage of those losses. So that would en end up being $2,500. Depreciation of your home from line 42 below, which is part three. We will get to that momentarily. And then in line 31, we will enter the carryover of prior year excess casualty losses and depreciation. So if there were um, any prior year excess casualty losses and depreciation, they would be reflected in line 44 of your previous year's 8829. For line 32, you will add lines 29, 30, and 31. If there, if there is no number, then this number would simply be zero. The allowable excess casualty losses and depreciation is limited to the smaller of line 28 or line 32. In line 34, we will add lines 14, 27, and 33. For line 35, this is the casualty loss portion from lines 14 and 33. You'll carry this amount to form 4684. And then you will enter C form 8829 above line 27, which is where you put this number on the form 4684. Line 36 is the total of allowable expenses for business use of your home. For this, you will subtract the number in line 35 from the number in line 34. Let's assume that there is some amount of casualty loss portion of $1,000. That would then decrease the amount that you can deduct on 88.29 by $1,000. For part three, you're going to enter the smaller of your home's adjusted basis or fair market value. Do not adjust this amount for depreciation that you've already claimed 
or changes in fair market value after the year you first used your home for business. For most homeowners, the smaller amount will be the adjusted basis. However, in areas that have been significantly been impacted by real estate price changes, it could be the fair market value. For line 38, you'll include the value of land that was included on line 37. As you know, land is not depreciable, so the depreciation uh, use of your home is limited to the depreciation that you calculate for the basis of the building. Line 39 reflects this when you subtract line 38 from line 37. The business basis of the building you will arrive at by multiplying line 39 by line 7, which, as a reminder, is the business percentage of the use of your home. So let's imagine that your home's value is $150,000. $50,000 of that is land. Means the basis of your building is $100,000. The business basis of the building is $25,000. And then you will enter the, appro uh, the depreciation percentage uh, based on the form instructions. Let's imagine that your home was in business use the entire tax year. The form instructions state that if you're if you first used your home for business after May 12, 1993 and before 2022, the applicable percentage would be 2.564%. The allowable depreciation, you would arrive at this number simply by multiplying line 40 by line 41. You'll enter the result here and then back on line 30 above. In part four, you will ca carry over unallowed expenses to 2023 for this 2022 tax return. For unallowed operating expenses, you simply subtract line 27 from line 26. If this results in a negative number, you would enter zero uh, since all of those operating expenses were all allowable, there are no carryovers, and then the same calculation for excess casualty losses and depreciation. You'll subtract line 33 from line 32. For the basis of this example, there are no carryover uh, casualty losses and depreciation uh, for, this, for this year as well. That concludes our review of IRS Form 8829, Expenses for Business Use of Your Home. If you would like to read more step-by-step -step guidance, uh, please check out the article that we've written. You can find it on our website, teachmepersonalfinance.com. Type in IRS Form 8829 in the search bar, and our step-by-step -step article should appear. If you like our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like our articles, please subscribe to our newsletter. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please post them in the comments section. As always, thank you.